the ballistic knife. Probably, you're probably not used to seeing one in this configuration, but um, this is what they look like when they're not loaded. So in, uh, in Black Ops, obviously, we see typically a, an overhand grip, which is fine for, for fighting with a knife. And then, of course, the blade is, is shot out of the body. And you can see how that actually works in real life. So ballistic knife might imply some sort of kind of uh, gunpowder or propellant. It, it's not that at all. It's just spring power. And then that locks into the grip with a little spring catch. And that is your trigger. I was chuckling to myself watching the clips because the idea of reloading this or loading this quickly is pretty hilarious if you actually look at one. So let's say that I've just uh, shot, shot the blade. I reach for a reload from somewhere, stuff that in there, and then while the enemy are shooting at me, I desperately try to compress, but I'm not gonna be able to do that. Um, the only way you can load this is by pressing it into a wall or the ground or I don't know the corpses of your enemies or something really really hard until that shelf locks into that trigger so you are not reloading this it's a one-shot deal much like a throwing knife and of course throwing knife is really far superior to this thing um, we've not shot our knife but the range on it is going to be extremely short uh, further than you can stab obviously but uh, nowhere near the, what, 100, 200 meters that, that we seem to get out of it in the game. But um, yeah, not at all practical, definitely doesn't work how it does in the game, and just carry another magazine for your pistol. The uh, FAMAS, an iconic weapon in popular culture, standard French service rifle, currently being replaced by the Heckler & Koch um, HK416. It's just a really cool looking gun, uh, we have to admit that. And of course, ballpark configuration. So the uh, essentially, the uh, grip sits in front of the breech face. That's that's how I define a ballpark. Magazine reloads, um, pretty, uh, pretty faithful. I'm struggling slightly with my gloves here, but um, catch on the front, pull down and pull the magazine out in the same uh, motion and insert fresh magazine, just clicks in place. So pretty well depicted um, and it crops up in all sorts of things. Heckler & Koch G11, um, known in uh, firearms study circles as a unicorn gun because of its rarity, and uh, so much so that we don't have one, which is pretty depressing. What we do have is a very historic piece of wood, um, well, wood and plastic. This is from the G11 program. You would actually have someone carve mock-ups out of wood, and really all it does is give you the the basic ergonomics of the gun. So a really cool artifact, but not a real G11. I have visited the uh, our counterpart collection in Koblenz in Germany, and I have seen a room full of these things. Um, and I was able to, to disassemble one and, and have a look at how unbelievably complicated it is. It's just uh, a cuckoo clock. Now, why is it so complicated? It's all to do with getting three bullets out of the barrel at the fastest rate possible to increase your chance of hitting the target. And if you do hit the target of incapacitating them. The G11 has this rotary chamber um, that, that has to convey around, um, or, well, to, to align around with the uh, barrel. Very unique system. And the magazine that sits on the top in the real gun actually reciprocates. Um, it, it moves back and forth. You can see this if you find a, another video of it in, uh, being fired. The magazine moves back and forth because the mechanism inside is moving as well. Hugely complicated, very, very clever. And yeah, this this unbelievable three round hyperburst, which um, I think I think Black Ops does a, a reasonable job of replicating. That mag dump on the um, spinning targets or move, moving targets really brings home the, the sort of the amount of firepower that you could bring to bear with a, a 50 round magazine and three round hyperburst. So that I think that represents what they were going for quite well. 
And then we see in the reload animation um, that the, the, the character is sort of ripping the magazine out of the front of the gun, getting another one, aligning it um, with the barrel and slotting it back into place. And that's, that's how the gun is reloaded. And a, a nice touch, which we don't see on our mock-up, instead of a cocking handle or a charging handle, you pull back and let go. We see the, um, the clockwork winding, which is how, um, how a fresh round, round is being fed into the rotating chamber and how the chamber is aligning with the barrel. So the, the almost uh, alarm clock wind up reload is quite fun and realistic. The AN-94 Automat Nikonova, shocking Russian, but um, there you go. Uh, we are fortunate to have in the Royal Armouries co collection an example. Uh, full disclosure, this is what's called an MMG, which is a factory produced um, dummy, essentially. The whole gun is essentially a gun within a gun. Appropriately enough, it's a bit like a Russian doll. There's, there's, there's a complete firing gun mounted inside this, um, and it's, it's incredibly clever. You can see that the magazine is offset. It's hardest to see in the game, but it is faithfully depicted. And that's to do with having to queue up two cartridges for the uh, hyperburst feature. Uh, but the hyperburst feature of this weapon is 1,800 rounds per minute, which is extremely fast for an assault rifle. And the way the game depicts the sights is interesting. So the front, there's nothing normal about this gun at all. The front sight is that distinctive shape, which is that shape so that you can have a night sight in the top. So you can put a, that out, this doesn't have it, but a, a glow in the dark element in the top. So if you aim through the middle, it's a normal front sight. If you aim through the top, it's a glowing front sight for nighttime use. And then this bizarre rear sight, which isn't depicted in Black Ops 2, at least not in the configuration that we have in the clip, which is a wheel that you turn with different numbered ranges. So the sights are weird, the mechanism's insane. The only normal things about it are the pistol grip, which is derived uh, basically a copy of the AK-74. The magazine is the AK-74 magazine. The butt stock is uh, similar to the AK-74. Again, everything else is nuts, uh, including this muzzle device, which uh, recirculates gases to produce just the right amount of pressure to make sure that the gun works reliably. Yeah, a bit of, bit of a unicorn gun that um, wouldn't really give you much of an edge. The so-called B-23R pistol from Black Ops 2, um, this is where Black Ops starts to diverge from reality. So I don't have an example to show you because it doesn't exist. But what it's clearly inspired by is the Beretta 93R. R standing for Rafica, which is uh, Italian for rapid. The folding foregrip is pretty essential. Um, for ac any kind of, I say accurate, not really accurate fire, but um, getting bullets to go where you, vaguely where you need them rather than in the ceiling. Uh, so you fold that down and you put your thumb through the trigger guard, which would normally be a bad idea, but that's how this works. In the game, its base equivalent, or future equivalent, has its folding foregrip permanently folded up. We have the selector on the side here, uh, so single shot, just like a normal pistol, to the three dots and you get three rounds, just like the um, futuristic version. Three very rapid shots. The three round burst makes much more sense than fully automatic. You have to be very skilled, very strong or both to keep the gun on target with an automatic self-loading pistol like this. Three round burst, you've got a chance of holding it on for long enough. Of course, in the game, it's not really a problem. Um, and it allows you to hit with pretty much three shots every time. Mostly fictional weapon, um, doesn't really offer any capability over and above the real thing. Thanks guys for watching this breakdown of some of the more iconic weapons from the Black Ops series and we hope you join us next time.